C'est bon. Euh, bonjour à tous. Euh, bienvenue à cette discussion avec le euh, réalisateur du documentaire Petite fille. I don't know why I'm speaking in French now. <laughs> So welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you for being here uh, to attend this discussion with the director of Little Girl. Um, we don't show a documentary very often, but uh, when we watched Little Girl, uh, the, the film was so moving and so uh, so incredible. The the uh, the um, the, uh, the 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 uh how do you say that in english like confidence the uh, the confidence that uh is that you would say that the family um uh seems to have shown um and and how you the trust that's the word i was looking for the trust uh that the family uh had put in uh in uh, in the film and in your in your direction uh sebastian was absolutely amazing uh i have rarely seen uh this kind of uh this kind of closeness And uh, we were extremely happy to uh, to to be able to present the film. Um, there's even somebody who uh, didn't know it was a documentary and thought that the acting was superb and that and that uh, the um, and that uh, the, the the film really tells uh, a story that could totally be a, a fiction, but it's real life. And um, So uh, thank you so much for all being here. And uh, Kevin, I will let you um, start um, and asking the question. Uh, Sebastian, sorry, I don't know the level of English. Uh, we have Marie. Uh, I don't know if you are uh, wearing Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's okay. But I think I'm going to answer in English. And if I have any problem, then I will ask Marie to help me. Okay, that's perfect. perfect. So Kevin. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Sebastian, for being here. It's, uh, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you uh, with us here in Sacramento. Um, and um, I would just like wonder if you would start off by telling us how you came up with the idea for the film um, about Sasha. Well, the idea just came to me a long time ago, many years ago, because I did a documentary, another one, uh, a previous one called Bambi. Bambi is the story of one of the first French uh, transsexual. Um, she, she had a kind of amazing life. She was born in 1935 in Algeria, when Algeria was uh, a part of France. And when she was very, very young, um, she told me that she felt I mean, she was born as uh, a little boy, but she felt uh, very early that she was a little girl. And I was very surprised of that because I thought like many people that uh, trans identity most of the times uh, appears when you are uh, an adult or maybe during your teenagehood at the puberty Uh, and then she said to me, no, there is no uh, a, a specific period where you can feel deep inside yourself that uh, you have a kind of dysphoria. And, um, and then I've realized that, uh, so you could feel as a trans person very, very early, you know, uh, You can have I mean, three, four or five years old and, and feel that there is something wrong with you and that you feel the opposite of uh, the sex where, in which you were born. So then I had this idea that it could be very interesting to make the portrait of uh, a little girl or a little boy of today and just to see how it goes, you know, how is it to be Uh, a trans kid today is it still something very difficult how it goes with the family how it goes with school with the friends and everybody and for me I thought that it could be a very interesting and important things to do just to understand what is happening inside the mind of um, 
as such a young person, you know, uh, facing this situation. Very good. And <clears throat> how did you um, get to know the family, um, Sasha's family? Well, <laughs> when I had this idea, uh, then I didn't know how to meet a family with a trans kid. First, we, we try to, with friends and associations, to, to find uh, such a family, but uh, it didn't work. Uh, and of course, we couldn't go to schools and ask for a trans kid, hello, you know. I mean, you can't knock at the door of the schools and just ask for a trans kid. This, I mean, this is not possible. So then we had this idea just to go on internet and to see if there was some forum uh, of parents uh, who, who maybe could exchange some ideas and their experience in, in this situation. Because what you have to know that in France, you have basically like no institution. There is no help from anybody. If you have a trans kid, you, you're on your own in a way. And most of the parents are very lost in this situation. They don't know what to think. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to react also. They don't know how to, to manage you know, all, all the demands of, of their kids. So, so we've seen that, I mean, we have discovered that, that there was a forum and we put uh, an announce there um, saying that we were looking for a family with a trans kid and for a documentary, for the project of a documentary film. And then two mothers answered, uh, one from Canada, uh, and she was like super positive, saying that in Canada, the situation of all the trans kids are really amazing because the society is very open and um, understanding and it's kind of paradise for the trans community. And I was very surprised just to hear that, you know, to, to that uh, the Canadian society was so in advance in a way. But I was looking for a French family. So I said no to, to this uh, mother. And then at the same time, the mother of Sasha wrote to me and she was very careful. She, I felt, reading her message that she was interesting but on the other hand she was also very scared just to put herself in this process of maybe making a film and to let a camera come into their family into their intimacy uh, that was a big step I think for her and so first we just uh, wrote emails to each other you know trying to to know each other and then after maybe a few weeks or yeah maybe one month or two uh, she asked me if we could meet and then the first meeting was very important because um, Karine the mother of Sasha uh, was exactly like she is in the film someone very sincere very frontal um, very emotional also but at that time she was also a bit lost because she was fighting with this situation for so many years um, especially with the school and she was very tired she she's living in the province where she feels totally alone with this question of trans identity and so she didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to think and how to fight with the school and, and to find a solution with them. So basically I was probably one of the first person with who she was able to speak freely with no judgment yeah. of the whole thing. Is, is my English okay? It's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah, I think uh, everybody can can hear you very well and and understand you. It's uh, marvelous. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say to everybody, there are two ways to do your view. 
And if you go up to where it says view at the top of the screen, you can look at gallery, which means you see everybody little squares, or you can say speak of you. And at that point, you will just have one big um, square and you will see the person speaking. So if you'd like to change your view, please do so. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions soon. You can put your questions into the chat or you can just um, put your hand up using the reaction button or simply put your hand up and I'll, I'll try to see you um, on the screen as well. And Cecile will, will help me uh, as well and, and, and Marie also. So um, please feel free to, to put forward your questions. Um, Sebastien, would you like to say something about how you um, got the confidence of Sasha? How, how, how did that work? Did you set off to, to do the documentary sort of right away? Was it gonna be a documentary or did you have to go by small steps to, uh, to gain Sasha's confidence? I mean, after the first meeting with the mother, then she's, I mean, this meeting was so special because I really loved her, you know, the, I mean, her personality, her sincerity was so beautiful. And I think she, she felt probably that she could trust me. So she said to me, okay, next time we see each other, you come at home for, um, for a tea and with cake. And I, I will introduce you to the whole family and to Sasha. And so two weeks after I came to the house and I remember that I had a very, the atmosphere in that house was very special because you could feel really, I mean, the love between each other. There was something that uh, was connecting each member of the family in a very special way, very, I don't know, the, the, it's, it's, I felt like I was in a kind of fairy tale, you know, in, in, in the house of, in French we say uh, Snow White, you know, you remember mm -hmm. Snow White, the fairy tale? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt like I was in the forest in this little house, you know, and with all these little men. And there was something a, a bit like that, you know, all these four kids and the parents and everybody was so caring and, and yeah, taking care of each other and, and okay, so I could, I felt this, you know, that, that something was really special there. And also, I remember that Sasha was very shy first. She was putting herself just behind the back of her mother, but she was observing me. And, but little by little, I have succeeded to, to talk with her. And of course, she knew exactly why I was coming, you know, and mm -hmm. she was, also, she was very curious and, and she really wanted to, uh, to do the film because she had a very long conversation with her parents about it. And, but I was still a stranger because it was our first meeting, you know? So little by little in that day, uh, I could speak with her and, and, and she was less and less shy and, and really open, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I said to the family, okay, I don't know if you will be able to, to do a documentary film. And so I'm gonna propose you something is like, we can come back in two weeks. Um, and what I would like to propose you is just to, to make a, a test uh, with the camera. I mean, to put, uh, the family in the situation of the shooting for one day and you see if it's possible for you if if you feel okay in front of the camera if you feel natural if this is something that you can really deal with it you know mm -hmm. and and everybody said okay let's try let's mm -hmm. and i remember that the first day of the shooting which is in into the film was extraordinary I don't know, something happens, everything happens so easily, the connection, the trust, and they really act like in their normal life, you know, they didn't do anything for the camera, they really did what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And basically, and I remember that Karin, the mother said to me, okay, if we do this, you have to understand something. If one of my kids just say, 
I have enough. I just, I don't want to do this. Or I don't want to do that. You will have to respect that. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, of course, I'm, I'm not going to force anybody to do anything, you know, because if you do that, then you feel it, you know, it mm -hmm. will be, um, uh, it's impossible to force someone to be filmed because otherwise the, the situation and uh, the incarnation you know, of the moment will be totally a disaster. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, yes, of course. And the, the main things to do is just to, for me to, to film your daily life, you know, and how it goes every day and with all these very different situations. Wonderful. Um, and I must say that, you know, from my point of view, that um, uh, as far as the, the film is concerned, that sense of, of love really came across strongly to me. So um, I'm not I'm not surprised that you that you tell us of of that in the film because I I certainly felt it in the documentary and and I watched it with my wife and we were both extremely moved um, by it and by the love that the family showed. Um, but probably the, the presence of, of that love, this very special love in that family happened probably because of the situation of Sasha. I think the family had no, no other choice to protect Sasha. And it's like everybody had a kind of mission in the family to, to protect Sasha. Mm -hmm. And that's why they have this special connection between all of them. You know, you feel that there it's a kind of shield mm -hmm. they have built, you know, with time just to protect her. Mm -hmm. And this is what I felt probably the first day, you know, when, when, when I met them. Mm -hmm. um, in the chat, Virginia asks, um, are you still in contact with Sasha and how old is she now? Yes, of course. Uh, Sasha is, uh, she's 11 and she's, she has change of school. Now she's in a new school, much more tolerant, and she's doing great actually. She has very good notes, and um, and she's living like a little girl uh, with uh, all the, her teachers and friends mm -hmm. uh, know about her, about her story, but they they don't care. I mean they. For them, Sasha is Sasha, and she's a little girl, and that's it, you know. Um, it's not a topic. It's not something that they speak about. Mm -hmm. So she's really have, right now, the life of any other little girl, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's great to hear and uh, wonderful um, to, to hear that, uh, the changes that have, that have taken place for her. Um, would you Probably, say something about Sorry. I'm just sorry. Probably the next challenge for her is going to be at, uh, at her puberty, mm -hmm. because then she will have to take some decisions with her parents um, to, and also with the doctors to, to, to see if she wants to, to use the blockers. What, I don't know what is, if the right terms, it's a kind of um, treatment that block all the um, all the masculinity that appears when you have puberty, you know, and try to help you to um, with uh, this moment, you know, is this is difficult to say in English. I'm sorry because it's more technical, but let's say okay, her next step probably is going to be at the puberty mm -hmm. for her. Very good, very good. I, I, I think people are, uh, are definitely understanding what you say, so um, 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 feel confident in, 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 in your English. It's very good. Um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> really. Um, I had, sorry, I had a question about, uh, about that, about, because um, it, it was very interesting that you were able to, that they, you know, they, they let you accompany them to the was it the first meeting with the doctor so yes that was really like to me that was the most trusting things <laughs> that they did with you because that was really uh, that was really one of the most intense moments and um i um so so i i had understood that she that the doctor was telling her that that she could take stuff 
uh, some some blockers right away. But what you're saying is that it only happens at puberty. So at first, the, the meeting with the doctor was more psychological or to prepare for what's to come. But there was no medical treatment started when she was eight. Is that what you're No, you don't use any treatment when the okay. kids are so young, you know. it's uh, The blockers are only used for the moment of puberty. Of course, when you have, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, eight, there is no need, you know, to use any um, uh, pills or medication, you know, you, you just have to live your life how, how you want, you know, it's just a support, it, it's a, a psychological support. And it's also a way to create a connection between um, the kid and, um, and the doctor. You know, uh, because this relation is going to happen for quite a while. And so you need to start somewhere. And so if you do it very early, it's better because then the relation year after year is, you know, is, is going deeper and deeper and the trust and the confidence, everything is, is working better that way. But then what the doctor says into the film is that if at the puberty, um, Sasha wants to use the blockers, uh, it will be possible. It's not an obligation. Any decision she takes, it's only her decision. Nobody forced her to do anything, mm -hmm. um, you know? So there is no, how can I say that? Each family, each person really choose the path that she wants to take, you know. Nobody is going to fault them to do anything. Very good. Um, Monette in the chat asks, um, <clears throat> the father was so quiet. Did he have any reluctance? No, he's not quiet. Is 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 I would say is is not quiet because he has some problems, some issues, you know, with the situation. Not at all. The father really understands what's going on, and he's really accepting the the situation how it is. And it's just the type of guy that doesn't talk too much. You know, he um, first he was a military man and very masculine guy you know and uh, but very sensitive also and very tolerant and he's totally um, uh, he totally understand and agree uh, with her mother of uh, with the mother of Sasha about uh, all the things that they have to do you know to to fix the situation with the school with uh, with a dance uh, lesson and, you know, mm -hmm. and other stuff, you know, so no, no. Very good. Um, How do you say solidaire? Um, Marie, what would you say for solidaire? You can say he, he has solidarity, but um, full support, he, he's supporting. He's supporting, totally, child, yeah. No matter what. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, th I think you could say he was very supportive of, <laughs> of, of, of you know, yeah. Very good. Um, Sonny asks, um, how were you able to get such intimate footage of Sasha without her semen at all affected by all the cameras in her face? That the uh, magic of, of documentary is probably, you know, I, I'm used to, to do this kind of films, very intimate and, and to film the daily life of people, because this is what I'm interested in, you know, this little thing, this little moment, this very, and also I try to, to film the life of these people in a very special way, which means that, that I, I, I try to, to be with them, just to make people understand their inner life, their emotions. Uh, I don't want them to be a subject. I don't want them to be observed. I, you know, I, I really want them to be 
into the film, but in a way that uh, we feel very close to them, that we can be with them not on them, you know, right. it's uh, yeah. which is for me a very big difference. Mm -hmm. And this it's possible with, I think the relation you, cr you create with them, you know, and with the trust and also the affection. And um, I remember one day I asked Sasha if I can come to her room and to film her playing with her toys there. And I knew that it was a, a special question because the room of Sasha is a secret place. Nobody uh, goes there uh, because it's a girly room and she couldn't share it with anybody um, until uh, the scene that you can see into the film where there is a little girl coming to her room and playing with the, with the dolls. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this actually that day was the very first day for her uh, where she has invited a little girl playing with her, you know, into her room. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I asked them if I can come and, and just film her there, she's, she was uh, a bit surprised, but she said, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So we came there and after a moment, because I had to prepare the camera and everything, and I said to her, okay, we're ready. So you can play with your toys now. And she just sat in, into her bed, totally um, uh, Im uh, immobile. Uh, yeah. Still. Yeah, yeah still, uh, without any, making any, any movement, you know. And so I was a bit surprised and I said, don't you want to play with your toys? And she said, well, normally when I play with my toys, I'm alone. Mm. And I said, yes, I know, but you know, I'm supposed to do a film with you. Uh, so maybe you can, you know, play with them mm -hmm. and, and act like if I, wouldn't, uh, I wasn't there, you know, uh, I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And she just looked at me and said, no, because you're there. And I said, and I was very surprised, you know, and, 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 <laughs> and, and I said, yes, I know. And, uh, but don't you want to try? And, and she said, no. Mm -hmm. And for me, and, and I thought, and I thought of that. And for me, that was very, imp and after some, 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 some times I've realized that her answers was so important because in a way she was telling me that she ref that she was refusing to act for the camera uh -huh. that that she was you know that she mm -hmm. wasn't an actress yeah. she didn't want to do something she, she she didn't want to be a puppet she didn't want to you know to be mm -hmm. to do something sp uh, specific for the camera if i had to film mm -hmm. her i had to film her really doing something mm -hmm. you know but she didn't want to do something specific for the camera, right. which for me was a kind of guarantee for a kind of truth mm -hmm. for the film, you know, yeah. about her, that she was really aware of what, what was going on, you know, with the film and, and everything. And for her to, to play for the camera was something uh, impossible. Mm -hmm. So that for me, that that was something very important. Yeah, that's that's wonder, that's beautiful. Yeah, the relationship. Um, has Sasha been able to continue dancing? That's from Max. Max McNeely asks. No, because for a year or two, I think the well, the thing that maybe people, um, what happened is that uh, when the shooting was finished, uh, it took me a year to to do the editing, the mixing, and, and, and to finish the film. And during that time, Sasha uh, couldn't go to the, um, to the dance lesson because the uh, conservatory uh, didn't accept her as a little girl. Mm. So she was really upset about that, but okay, that was the situation. 
And then when the film was finished and when it, when he, it was broadcast on TV, um, it has a very huge uh, success and all the media in France was, uh, there was a lot of, of, of reviews and, and, and debates and whatever. And because of this, uh, the, cons uh, the Conservatory of, of Dance was attacked uh, in the media. Um, mm. And then after, and they had some pressure also from some people. Um, uh, and then after a, a moment, uh, they have decided that Sasha could come back. You mm. Know? Mm. That's, that's really interesting. The next person's question, Michael Elfant, he writes in the chat, has the situation in France with trans or non-binary children improved since the film was made? Well, I would say that maybe it's too early to say mm -hmm. uh, because the film was broadcast a few months ago. So probably it's going to take some time, you know, uh, to make people understand what is trans identity and especially with kids. Um, so it's not easy. And also there is so few places uh, where you can go and ask for some help. You know, you have like two hospitals in France which have a very small department ded uh, dedicated to trans kids. And that's it, basically. You have some very little center or associations that can help you a bit, you know, but most of the families are really alone. Very good. Um, Adrian, you put your hand up. Would you like to ask your question? Yeah, I actually did. I'm a slow typist. Um, I thought that the material was shaped so beautifully that I'm not surprised that there were people who actually thought it was a, um, a crafted fiction. Um, the opening was so charming where she was trying on things and said, oh, peut-être, peut-être. But I wanted to comment on the score. I, noted, I realized I was listening to countertenor music, uh, which is the register um, that is sort of almost like the soprano range, but with a with a more throaty, beautiful tone. Um, and you used the countertenor Philippe Jarouski and yeah. um, also then uh, Pavan for a, a, a Dead Princess was played, which is Ravel. And I thought that that was wonderful choices. I just loved that. And it wasn't something that was obvious, but it, it really enhanced the film, I thought. So I, I realize this is deviating from the general subject matter, but. I thought it was brilliant choice, the score. Thank you for that, thank you. <laughs> I mean, the music, I mean, there is few music in the film, but uh, the, uh, the music is very important because uh, there is something emotional about it. And I think it, it's a kind of extension of what she could feel inside of her, you know? Mary Jo asks, um, did her brother have to deal with comments from his classmates and friends? No, actually what happened uh, when the film was broadcast, uh, Vasily, the brother of Sasha, uh, came back from school just the day after and all his teachers have watched the film. And, and he, they said to, to him, we have a message that we want you to bring to Sasha, just say to her that next year, when she will be, when she will come to the college, uh, just say to her that we are so impassioned to meet her and we will be so happy uh, to be uh, her teachers, which I think was really beautiful because in a way, for her, it's a, it's a kind of guarantee of protection, you know, mm -hmm. and tolerance. After all these years fighting with the school, just to know that when she will uh, enter into the college, um, that it's going to be fine. When you say college, is that college, like um, 
the junior yes. high? Yeah, because in France we said école primaire because mm -hmm. she's still in école primaire. I don't know what you say or how do you call it in in America. We would say primary elementary, school. Oh, primary school. But yeah, college, primary school. School. College, is college, college, is college is middle school. Middle school, yeah. Middle Thank you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Sorry. And then college would be like junior high or or middle school. Middle school, yeah. Yeah. So next year she's gonna go to middle school. Mm -hmm. Very good. A couple wow. of people have a question, Suzanne and Sony, about the drink that uh, she had daily. And um, Sony, the would, drink. Yeah, they said, what was the drink they gave to her daily? A squeak. Oh yes, it, it's a uh, it's a chocolate milk. And she did she drink it from a bottle for a reason or? I mean, she likes to 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 drinking like this sometimes. Yeah. It depends, not every day, but sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. Chip asks, have other families contacted you since the movie has been, re been released? Well, I'm very close to the family. So from time to time, I call them just to see if, just to have some news, you know, to see mm -hmm. if everything is okay, how mm -hmm. Sasha is doing. And um, yeah, uh, but, you know, but, I, I do that with all of the, persons mm -hmm. I'm filming with all my or the films also you know right. I think I didn't phrase my question quite right sorry I have other families so have other families contacted you has anybody else yes a lot yeah, yeah we we had a lot of messages and letters um, to me to Sasha to the mothers of Sasha yes mm -hmm. a lot because uh, maybe I mean we have the film had then more than three millions and, and three million and half people watching the film in France, mm -hmm. which is really a lot for a documentary film. And so the, the film was quite an, an event in a way. So, and a lot of people, not really concerned people about the subject or uh, were very curious about it, you know, and were very moved by the film. So, and they wanted just to, to send a message to the family or to me or to the production. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Cecile was asking how big was the crew? How big was your- uh, Very small, very small. When you do a documentary film, you, you, you have the obligation to have the smallest uh, crew you, you can have. Mine was four people. Uh, but during the shooting, we are only three. There is me, um, a cinematographer and a sound engineer. And I have an assistant, but the assistant is never with us. He's always hiding himself in a room somewhere. Um, so we are three. Um, Very good. Um, Michael Elfant asks a question about how else can other people see this film? We belong to a support group of parents and families of children who are trans and non-binary and think others would appreciate seeing the film. But we imagine many may have missed this opportunity. No, uh, the film is gonna be released in America uh, in the fall. Um, the distribution is gonna be made by Music Box, which is an American distributor. Uh, so I hope a lot of Americans will be able to, to, to see it. Okay, very good. Uh, Mark, would you like to ask your question? Which one? <laughs> you said about the sequences and then about yeah, the Yeah, I, I was curious if as you were filming, you, you did show some of the sequence to the family or you kept everything to the end. And, and that does doing either one as implication on the documentary no when i'm when i'm filming when i'm into the process of filming i've never show uh anything to the people I'm, I'm filming it's impossible because they can't be on both sides you know because otherwise yeah. they they will have a kind of reaction to uh to say uh, I agree with this, I, I disagree with that, you know, 
and the subjectivity of the people is impossible to deal with, you know, so they have to trust me and, you know. Okay, that, that's what I thought. Mm. And, and I, I have another question is, is, can you tell me in which town the family live? Because I think I recognize some places, but I'm not sure. Or, or is that... they, they live in Lens, uh, okay. in the north of France. Thank you. Um, Sony, would you like to ask your question about um, the conservatory? Oh, sure. Um, so I, um, I later in the in the film, when we see how the conservatory behaved toward Sasha and her family it was kind of surprising to me because of the footage you saw you got earlier where they showed everything. They showed the whole class and they showed the other students. So I didn't understand how were you able to get that footage if apparently the stance of the conservatory was as it was, did you explain what the film was about or did they not know really what was it was about? No, we were, I mean, with the conservatory, because we didn't know what they knew exactly. And so we were like floating with them, you know, <laughs> we, we didn't say anything very, um, what can I say? Um, because they didn't realize exactly what was the subject of the film and what was the situation, you know. But when they knew when it, what it was about, then they realized the whole situation and, and they refused, you know, to let Sasha come back as a little girl. Um, I just Which like to is normally not allowed because it's a kind of discrimination, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you went the first time, what did you tell them? What what were you telling them that you were shooting for? Because you also had to get permission to shoot the other students, right? We said that we were doing the portrait of the of a of a family during, I mean, uh, their daily life, you know, and and that's it, you know. We 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 didn't go into the specific, uh, into the specifics of the film, you know. We just said that we're doing. Uh, a documentary about a family living in Lens, uh, and um, and that's it. And so we said the same to to the whole class, also to to, to the other families, and et voila. Mm -hmm. I just and wanted to, oh, sorry. to see. Actually, I I'm interjecting about the family. The family in the in the in the dance class when they found out about it? I mean, was there any support of Sasha or was, is it just, you don't some know? Of them, no, no, some of them were supportive. I don't know the whole group, if there were, if there was a kind of uh, unanimity, I don't know. But uh, when the mother came back and asked for Sasha really to go into the group as a little girl, um, the directors just said, no, that was impossible. And I think the mother at that time was so tired of the fight with the school. Mm -hmm. that, so I said to her, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go back there and, and try to force them to uh, accept Sasha as a little girl? And she said, you know what? I'm so tired mm -hmm. of everything. I think I'm gonna just stop for a while uh, because I don't have the energy. I don't, I mean, she said to me, I can't fight like all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think the mother needed just a break, you know. I wanted to pass on to you, uh, Sebastian, in case you didn't see them in the, uh, in the chat on the side. Um, many people have complimented you on the music. Many other people said uh, the music was great choices. I thought the soundtrack was excellent, says Max McNeely. And Mark says, I love the score too, especially the song pieces. Thank you. <laughs> and Joni asks, says, it's extraordinary, beautiful, the way you as a filmmaker seem not to be there. I am still tearful today over the first doctor's visit. What an incredibly emotionally intelligent family. The way you captured Sasha's movements was so superb even when she was not dancing. So that's Merci. 
Um, and then Sony has a question, I'll, I'll read it. This question can be for anyone. I was not clear on who the older sister was. At first I thought was a nanny, then seemed was part of the family, but wasn't sure if, if it was an oldest daughter prior to their marriage. I thought the mother had not had other girls. No, um, the oldest girl is a, from a previous marriage. Um, and, um, and then you have, uh, actually she had um, another kid, um, uh, oldest boy, but he was not living in the house because he's an adult. And, uh, and then you have uh, uh, Soline, uh, the oldest sister, and then you have Vasily, Sasha, and Vadim. So the five kids, but I, I could only film four of them because the adults is, is not living with them anymore. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Um, and did Susan K asks, did her older sister act as a strong role model for Sasha? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I think everybody is important for Sasha. Her, her big brother, for example. I remember that Sasha said to me that she was a bit scared that when she really said that she was a little girl and that she really wanted to, uh, to live as a little girl and to play um, what little girls like to play, you know? And she was just afraid that she couldn't have the same relation with her brother because she didn't want to play the same game as him, as he likes, you know? And that was a kind of, uh, she was very anxious about that, that this assumption of her identity could uh, create a distance between her and her brother. And, and, you know, she was really afraid of that because she wanted to be very close to, to him, but as a little girl. Mm -hmm. but, and the big sister probably she's a kind of role model and yeah I guess yeah um, Ellie Zachs writes in the uh, chat merci pour un film extraordinaire merci <laughs> um, Susan K asks in the US there is an ongoing TV documentary about jazz a boy who has been changing to a girl and now she is a teenager. Um, have you heard of that uh, TV documentary? No. 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 And, and the name and the name of the documentary is Jazz. It's. Uh, I'm not sure. Susan K, could you tell us um, a little bit about Jazz? Is it the boy's name or is it the name of the documentary? Um, hi. Thank you very much for your film. Um, I haven't watched it this year, but I was watching it when it first started a couple of years ago. And um, it was about a young boy that wanted to, was in a, a girl in a boy's body. And um, his family was so supportive that um, he, uh, they went through all of this uh, uh, procedure or process. And uh, then I think she's had, um, um, medical changes and she, um, it, it's just, uh, very, um, uh, enlightening. It might be good for, um, Sasha or you to watch to see if this would be, um, a good, um, show of transformation. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what channel it's on, but it was, for a few seasons, um, and I think it's still ongoing. Um, okay, but, I will have a look. Yeah. Okay, and I think the name of it is I Am Jazz, and it might be on Bravo, or I, I don't, it's like not ABC or CBS, it's one of the other channels, so it might be on YouTube or something too. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I had tears for the first half hour of watching, um, your movie or your documentary. It was so sensitive and um, just heartwarming. Thank you. Thank you. Marie uh, writes in the chat that the, it's called I Am Jazz, A Family in Transition. And then Virginia says that jazz 
has also written a book. Okay, I will have a look, definitely, yeah. Um, I wondered if you could say something, Sebastian, about the idea of femininity and how, how we see femininity being constructed in the film through the clothes and the, the toys and so forth. Um, I, I just thought, thought that was uh, really sort of fascinating to have this sort of very strong uh, female personality. And, and then it was about femininity and sort of, you know, the colors, pink and uh, and so on. And um, if you could say a few things about that. Um, it, well, for what I could observe with Sasha about this question of femininity and all the, um, the signs that she wants to, to get, you know, I mean, the toys, the, the clothes, uh, the music, everything that for her belongs to the femininity is, she was so obsessed with it, you know, at, at that time of the film. And I remember that probably for her, just to get all these signs um, was a part of her affirmation mm -hmm. that she couldn't do at school or outside the house and at the, conserva at the conservatory of dance. So what is very interesting is to know that after the film, when she was accepted as a little girl in the school, then she was less obsessed with this kind of uh, signs of femininity. And she was more fluid in a way in her desire, you know, she could mix things. Um, her clothes were not so, uh, was a kind of mix with femininity, masculinity, whatever, you know, uh, the, the affirmation of her femininity was not so obsessive in a way. So I think probably during all this period of her very early um, childhood, she was very obsessed with all these different signs because it was a way for her just to say something, to express outside her identity and, and to, make understand who she was, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, but now she's less stressed about it. And she, and what I think is very interesting that she has accepted just to mix, you know, uh, because for quite some years, uh, she was playing to boys, uh, things, you know, uh, football uh, with cars and whatever you know and she had for quite some years some clothes for boys you know mm -hmm. so a part of her story is is a mixture of all of this you know yeah sort of really needing to affirm her femininity that was being denied her um so the the colors that 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 might seem like sort of uh sort of freely and not strong or for her they are strong like the, the pink and wearing a dress and so forth um, yeah whereas to you know typically with um with women with women sort of in the past when there was this you know wanting to affirm themselves as a strong woman they would often not wear uh women's clothes they would wear like uh trousers uh, pa uh you know pants and stuff um and so they, they think it's really uh fascinating to watch and very moving to watch how how the 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 girls things become power you know they, they become her her strength yeah but her mother tried to make her understand that there are signs mm -hmm. because when they decided just to make a kind of um, um you know when they go into the room and they want to uh, faire un tri de vêtements how to say they that sort through clothes and yeah yeah and um, and then at some point the mother say, okay, you only keep what is pink. And, and Sasha said, yes, I'm so sorry. I can't stand, I mean, I can't help it, you know? Mm -hmm. And the mother said, yeah, but look at me, I'm wearing blue and mm -hmm. I'm your mother and I'm a woman. So you can't wear blue as a woman. Mm -hmm. and, and she know that of course, you know, but for her at that moment, pink is really an obsession. 
because she's at that point where she really needs to express so much who she is, probably. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to uh, Sasha at all about your other films, like particularly Bambi? Um, I've been, uh, I've loved your films um, since I watched Les Invisibles, um, uh, and I watched it again last night just to to see it again. Was and was really um, moved again by the the extraordinary stories of uh, of uh, homosexuals uh, who uh, from the sort of were born in like 1920 and 1930 and everything that they've been going through and and what their lives have been. And I would you know strongly recommend if anybody would like to see that film, Les Invisibles is, is really a, a, another beautiful documentary that uh, Sébastien uh, made. Um, did you talk to her all about Bambi, I wondered? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. she knew about Bambi and, and she really wanted to meet her. And for her, Bambi is a kind of, a kind of model because now she's an old woman, she's 86. And, um, and just to know that Bambi had this kind of possible life you know uh, not only with problems and and difficulties but also with fun and with friends and you know as a beautiful woman um, for her yeah that was something important even if it's not of course Bombi was born so many years ago and her her affirmation uh, came in, 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 a, in a period of time where everything was so different, uh, probably much more difficult, um, but still it was possible, mm -hmm. you know, to do it. You had to be bold, you have to be really, um, to be uh, rebellious in a way, you know, and, and, uh, but still it was, it was possible. Mm -hmm. Did, and so um, I think I think for Sasha Bambi is yes is is a kind of important character I guess. Mm -hmm. Don and Sarah in the chat asked, um, did Sasha stay close with her brother? Very close. Very very close. It's I mean they are a super close family. You know mm -hmm. they are really like. Uh, you know uh, the fingers of of a, of a hand. You know that they, they are so close to each other. Okay. Um, Susan Kay asks, um, how did the first 10 days of her school year work? Did she still have to be a boy until after the school meeting? Yes. I mean, this school was so cruel with her, yeah. really. Until the end, until uh, they had no other choice to accept her as, as, as a girl. Because what you need to know is that when the doctors uh, put a kind of paper, a document, an official document saying that Sasha is in, dysphor in the situation of a dysphoria, this paper was very important because then the family could attack the school uh, on the, um, 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 for maltraitance, I don't know how to say that. Mistreatment? Form, mistreatment and, or form of abuse. Right. Yes. Abuse. Yes. So when the school understood that, that they knew that they could have some trouble, some problem, you know, because of this, then the attitudes starting to change. Mm -hmm. you know? They didn't change because they really understood, you know, and accepted uh, the situation and what Sasha was claiming, you know, that was not at all what it was about. I mean, the acceptance of uh, the identity of Sasha I think was made because they had no other choice because of this paper. Um, Susan Kay says, could the family sue the school for discrimination? They could, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, because what also you have to understand is when I met the family, Sasha is seven, but the problem with the school is, um, uh, was happening for two two years, you know. So the mother was so exhausted, you mm -hmm. know, with the situation. So as soon uh, as they has accept, uh, they have accepted, you know, Sasha as a little girl. I think the mother wasn't. She didn't have enough uh, energy, and you know, to go back there and you know. 
and, and to fight with them yeah. again. Rene, I saw that you had your hand up. I wondered if you'd like to ask your question. Excuse me, there. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm typing is terrible. I've tried a second time and <laughs> right when you called me. So I, I prefer speaking if that's all right. Um, first, I, I just wanted to say that it struck me that the older sister would make a tremendous movie star <laughs> if she had the talent that that reflected her 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 look. She she was um, I thought very interesting looking person. Anyway, I don't know. I doubt if she had that ambition, but uh, <laughs> I would suggest a, a film. Um, I will know, tell a, her. Yes, <laughs> you're right. Tell her. Second thing about you, I. Um, uh, by my count, you've made six and a half uh, documentaries. I'm saying a half because one was a short. Um, and your last five, your last five have been documentaries. And I was wondering if you have any plans to ever go back to feature films. Yes, I have. Well, actually, right now I'm doing a long version of Bambi uh, because Bambi is a 15 minutes film long. And so... Um, I made a deal with Canal Plus with the t French TV channel and to propose them to make a long version of it. And I, I just finished the editing of the new long version uh, three days ago. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm doing. And, and then I will go for two other uh, documentary films. And I guess, I hope that after I will do a future film, a fiction, a fiction one. We, I, I can't wait to see the, the Bambi film. It's going to be a real treat to see that, I think. Uh, Mark, would you like me to ask your question or would you like to ask it? I, I can ask it. Um, I was wondering, Sebastian, how did you become a documentary filmmaker who can get so deep in people's life? And did it come naturally to you or? Well, it's difficult to answer that. Um, I guess it's like in real, I mean, in real life, you know, with people you meet every day, it's like when you are curious and when you like people and it's the way you connect yourself to the, to the others, you know? And I think I really love the people I'm filming, you know? I'm very, I have a lot of empathy and um, and probably they feel that they can trust me. And, um, and anyway, everything that I'm filming, I'm doing it with their approval, you know, because when I'm filming, they know that I'm filming, actually. So... But, but also my question is not so much that, but um, was it something in you that wanted to tell the true story of other people rather than, you know, invented stories or um... oh no because i do both actually i, I studied mm. uh, with cinema with fiction and uh, and i'm interesting in both uh genre you know but um sometimes with some subject you have some stories you have i felt that it could be really stronger to to do a documentary than a fiction I mean, Little Girl, for example, if I was doing it in a fiction, for me, it will be totally different because then I will have a kid who will be playing, uh, you know, all this, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, all these signs of trans identity, which could be very, you know, uh, cliche. And, and, and I think it's, much deeper and and, and 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 necessary to do documentary films with such a topic, you know, um, because then people really understand the reality of it. Mm -hmm. Because if you do fiction, people will say to you, oh, this is fiction, you know, in reality, it doesn't exist like this, you know, it's not possible, whatever, you know, but uh, as a documentary, then the, the the position of the film creates something, a kind of uh, a, a proof, you know, a kind of mm -hmm. and truth also, which is 
what you need sometime in this kind of story. And probably it's, I, I have a kind of fascination with uh, the life of anonymous people, you know, the nobody people, mm -hmm. the daily life. I think when you have to tell something about today, about the present, about what is a society, what are uh, the diversity of a society, probably documentaries are stronger uh, elements, stronger pieces to make you understand the complexity of a society mm -hmm. and of uh, what is human nature and the diversity of people. Mm -hmm. And it's like in photography, I love snapshots, for example. I, I, I do go to flea markets and to garage sales, for example, to, mm -hmm. and, and, and I buy a lot of uh, snapshots, family portraits, you know, this kind of stuff. And because in these pictures, you can understand in, in, in a very intimate way what was uh, the, pa how, how the past was, you know, mm -hmm. you, you understand it so deeply uh, because you are in the daily life of all these uh, different people from very different background. And it's so interesting. It, it's, it's interesting in, in terms of aesthetics, but also in terms of uh, sociology. And um, there is different level, you know, with mm -hmm. this material. And for me, documentary films, it, it's, it's the same. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Um, Adrienne, you put your hand up. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember. I'm so sorry. I was. Oh, it, I mean, I, I was clear. I'm so sorry because I, I don't know if sometimes my English. I tried to say something, but I'm not sure that if I clear enough. It. I. I'm. It, it was for everybody, clear to me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. People are are not in their heads, and I, I'm. Perfect. Perfect. And that the example, given an example like that, is 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 wonderful. I I can I can see you. In, in, in the market, you know, going around and looking at the pictures and, and discovering. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Adrienne, sorry. All your points are crystal clear. Um, I wanted to mention that I saw a film called Ma Vie en Rose um, mm -hmm. in. Uh. Okay, so what should we do? Um, I think Adrienne has frozen. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> She was talking about the film Ma Vie en Rose, um, yeah. which I think is a Belgian film, um, if I remember rightly. Yeah, Belgian. It's, uh, I think this film was made like 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah, I think about 20 years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, I have to admit that I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, of course, I know, I know the film, I mean, by name, but, but mm. uh, I've never watched it. Okay. Uh, Mary, would you like to say your question? Sure. So it's not a question. It was just a comment on um, the the impact of the documentary of Sesha. Is just it's so strong because it, just watching Sesha in this documentary, it's undeniable that her identity is a girl. Like there's no convincing. I really like that. There's no you know, voice, like off voice, trying to explain every, anything or to convince us because it's just there. And of course, there can be um, fictional films about the same topic, but they will never have the same impact um, that this child has had. Um, and, uh, you know, being French, I'm in contact with uh, French friends. And I remember when it came out, I think it was on Arte, everyone was um, posting about it, like it, it had a huge impact. And I think it's, it's um, mainly because of this, um, just this, this little girl who just is the way she is. And um, you watch five minutes of the documentary and you understand it. Like there's no debate about who she is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah thank you. <laughs> I just really agree. <laughs> <laughs> Adrienne, would you like to try again? You froze. I would, I know. And then I was kicked out of the meeting. Obviously, my iPad has it in for me. Um, am I audible now? It's, yeah. it's very peculiar because for the whole rest, I've heard all of you 
And uh, I agree totally with what Marie put in the um, chat also, which I believe she just was saying when I got back in. I just wanted to say that I saw a film in 1997, last century, called Ma Vie en Rose. And it was a fictional treatment of the same subject. And um, while it was fine as far as it went, I really think that your film was infinitely more splendid, so. Thank you, thank you. Well, uh, as I was saying, I, I, I've never watched uh, My Vie en Rose. I, I know the film by name, by repetition, but I've never watched it. Um, Max McNeely, would you like me to read what you wrote or would you like to read it? Okay, this is from Max. For me, he, his, is, he is an amazing, and it, it is an amazing and powerful film about a beautiful, sensitive girl, a loving, supportive family, and a very timely topic. Thank you so much for this documentary. And that's from Max McNeely. Thank you, Max. <laughs> Cecile, have you um, anything well, actually, to say? Well, actually, I had a question about the, the situation in France, because I don't know if you heard um, about the controversy with the bathroom, uh, the school bathroom, or not only school, I suppose it's, um, sorry, I was eating my, a tart. <laughs> um, in the US that, that you know, um, kids in school have to, in certain schools, they have to use uh, the, the bathroom, the gender they were assigned at birth. And, um, oops, sorry. And I was wondering what's the situation in France? I mean, what's the, is there, is there legislation? What's the, because um, you were saying that they could have sued the school. So there is, they are, I mean, everybody's protected. How, do, how does it work? Is it, no, you know, the problem in France is that uh, they, they just realized that they have a kind of uh, situation, let's say, with, with a trans kid, you know. So we're not so far, you know, the government is not so far just in this kind of uh, question of uh, the toilets, you know, to have specific toilets for uh, trans kids, you know, these kind of things or, you know, they... The thing is, you have quite nothing. You have no um, debate or whatever, you know, in, in the government, in, 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 into the parties, into the politics about this kind of questions. Um, it, it, I think they're not interested at all in this kind of topic. A few months ago, there was um, a little, uh, not a little girl, she's a teenage girl and she was in um, opposition with her family. So she was in a, a foyer, uh, foster care, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and then she was going to her school. And so she was born as a boy and she felt that she was a girl. And one day she has decided to put a dress. It was the first day when she decided just to, to put a very strong sign of her identity. And then one of the person in the school uh, came to her and they had a kind of uh, argue about that, you know, and the girl was filming discreetly the conversation, the very uh, aggressive conversation that they had, you know. And then a few days after this conversation, the girl just uh, has committed a suicide. Oh, no. And so now she's dead. Mm. And then so there was a kind of uh, a debate uh, after this uh, terrible events, you know, saying that in schools, uh, the how do you say that the, the team of the school, let's say the teachers, the directors, the, the, the le conseiller d'orientation, je sais pas. Uh, all, all the advisors currently, yeah. Um, yeah. Orientation advisors. All these kind of people, they have no formation uh, to understand what is trans identity. They don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to, um, 
how to to manage also the reaction of the other kids around the people uh, with a trans identity. Now it's really <laughs> it, just to to say it, it um, simply uh, the situation is found is really difficult for for trans people and especially for trans kids. You have no help, you have no education, you have no understanding in a way, you know. So it's like when you go into school, I would say it's, if you have the chances to have a very cool and understanding director, cool for you. I mean, but if you have the reverse situation, then it's gonna be a nightmare. And so you never know what uh, will happen, you know. You need be lucky but people need to be uh, trained you say trained préparé uh, trained yeah trained yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or we could say educated as well mm -hmm. educated yeah really that will be a good start yeah yes because at least uh, when she gets the when sasha gets the note from the doctor then parents have a uh, legal um, uh, standing legally, yes. So they could. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't know, Kevin. Do you, in, does it exist in the US? Like, if you have a, um, oh, so if somebody knows, I don't know. <laughs> I don't well, I think guess, that. that yes, would be the if, case. if you have a kind, if you have a kind of medical certificate saying that your kid is uh, uh, in dysphoria situation, uh, normally. Uh, it's, 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 it's the proof of uh, the identity uh, and the situation of your kid, which uh, will protect the kid and the family in case where there is people who doesn't want to recognize the situation. And um, I mean, in France, it's possible for this, you know, but just to get an appointment with uh, yeah, a, sure. a, a, a doctor, uh, a, a pediatrist, you know, like the one of Sasha is super long because you can imagine there is only two places in, in France where you can have this kind of uh, uh, meeting, you know, with this kind of doctor. So could you imagine, I don't know, if you live in uh, Toulouse or in the south of France or in the middle of France and you are in this kind of situation, well, in a way you are, it's going to be very tough, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Renee, would you like to ask your question? Sorry. Uh, yes, there. Am I, I was trying to get my hand down. There. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I was wondering uh, if you feel that um, this lack of empathy uh, that you're expressing in France about trans has anything to do with the more general sexual identity of homophobia, you know, a, a negative response to to that sexuality? Is there any connection? Well, it's, the thing is, uh, the visibility of the trans community is, I mean, in France is, is quite new in a way. I mean, of course they are existing for quite a while, you know, but really the, I remember when I did a film, a feature film called Wild Side, which was 20 years ago. And the main character was uh, a trans woman and I remember when the film was released, uh, the, the, I mean, the audience uh, wasn't really interesting into the film because probably the film was too early at that time, 20 years ago. Nobody was interesting in this kind of questions of identity, of gender, whatever, you know, it was not a topic mm -hmm. anywhere, you know, and it's, really interesting just to to see that today probably because of this new generation who wants to probably to reinvent um, what is femininity what is masculinity what is um, an education and all this model that we have in front of us you know mm -hmm. as kids uh, and what we do with them and how we force to um, to reproduce all these models that society wants to give us and to impose us, you know, 
Hopefully the new generation are really much more sensitive to all these questions. And 20 years ago, no, mm -hmm. it was not a debate at all. This is what I think what has changed probably because also of the visibility in America of all the trans community with also new generation of uh, filmmakers, authors, writers, uh, journalists that little by little uh, has made, you know, uh, um, have created a kind of visibility. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah, and I think that in certainly in the United States, you know, one of the um, one of the questions that has come up again and again is like, who will play these trans roles, and how you would have um, cis actors playing uh, trans roles, and that's become more and more of a of a debate. And I think more and more filmmakers are turning towards the idea that if it's a transgender person in the film, then we will have a transgender actor. Uh, playing the role, and I think that's been a, a, a tremendous, uh, you know, discussion to that's been had around around cinema. I and mean, I I, of course, yeah. no, I understand the debate and and this kind of question. But when I see a, a series like Transparent, for example, mm -hmm. from HBO, yeah. um, I think the series is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I, I love this series and the main character. Uh, is an, a fantastic actor mm -hmm. who was playing this, this, you know, this trans character in a very uh, sensitive and and in a very sensitive way, you know. And I think it was it was it is so true into this character, and I mean, I really loved it. So I think we need to be careful with this, you know. Mm -hmm that of course, if you have a trans character who could be played by a, a, a trans person, yes, why not? If you think that this person is the right person to, to play the character, of course. Mm. But sometimes you have also some actors like the one in Transparent, who is just amazing, you know, and so true. Um, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. And also what I think is very interesting because transparent is the story of a man feeling as a woman for a very, very long time. And at the age of 60 or 65, just, just make a kind of uh, uh, announcement, you know, a very late one to the whole family. And he has lived uh, like a man, you know, uh, until then. So I think it was very uh, under, under, understandable, uh, no, uh, comprehensive. Uh, uh, I mean, we can understand that the director, yeah, understandable, sorry, um, that the director of the series has chosen um, uh, a non. Uh, uh, transgender person, you know, because then it could be very interesting just to see this actor also understand how to 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 be a man and then to to go little by little to this identity, you know. I think there was a kind of of um, a, I'm so sorry, it's so difficult to say that in English for me, but. For me, the choice of this actor was was really interesting. I mean, very good. Yeah, I, I thank you for uh, for all that insight um, into into that. It's great to hear um, uh, your position, um, your uh, your ideas about that. Um, thank you. Uh, I don't want to be dogmatic, uh, you know. Yeah, you know. No, yeah, totally. I I, I I fully agree with that, and I think that it's been. What I think has been good has been that we've had this debate about it and we've, you know, had to think, well, about transgender roles and, and, and to think about the idea that there are transgender actors and that it doesn't need to be, um, you know, always um, 
somebody who's not transgender playing that role? I, th I think also the, the, you know, it's what is an actor? An actor is playing somebody that he or she is not. And I think the, que the, most, the more important question probably from the transgender community is uh, when will a transgender person be able to play, you know, a man or a woman, a cis man or a cis woman? Uh, so they, you know, because there's not that many transgender stories and they're going to want to work. And uh, I mean, to me, that's, um, that would be really like the, uh, the, the advancement would be that a transgender person plays mm -hmm. somebody who is not transgender. <laughs> uh, isn't that done in some of Amadovar's films? There's an, oh, there's an yeah. actress who is, is, is a trans woman, I believe, who is oh, in yes. uh, I wouldn't oh, be surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's rare. Yeah, that's that. Uh, but anyway, does anybody else have questions or uh, anybody wants to intervene? Otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna let everybody go. It's late in France, and <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> lunchtime for us here. Uh, I also wanted um, everybody to know that uh, Sebastian Lifshitz just won the uh, César which is the equivalent of the Oscar <laughs> for is, um, is it your previous film, uh, Adolescent? Uh, yeah. That is the story of uh, two teenage girls and how they grew up together, very friend, I mean, uh, two friends and that they grow up and get separated by, you know, by life, by, uh, um, and it's a really beautiful film and it's available on um, Amazon Prime uh, if you have a Amazon Prime, and if you don't, I believe you can uh, you can pay uh, to watch it. So um, I really encourage everybody to uh, to watch uh, Adolescent. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, yeah, well, I wanted to say, you know, we're meeting again at the end of the month, and this time it will be a comedy. Um, parents d'élèves, we are going to celebrate the uh, the end of the school year. Um, and uh, invite, if you know teachers, we want to invite them uh, for, to watch the film for free. They send us a, an email uh, from their um, professional address. So we really want to, we really want to make it fun. It's a really silly, fun comedy. Nothing like a little girl, obviously, uh, but you know. And then, uh, of course, uh, in June we'll have the festival. And we, you know, I'm touching wood, but we will probably have some uh, in-person screening uh, because theaters, yeah, <laughs> have reopened um, in, uh, in, uh, in Sacramento. And if we can get an, uh, an arrangement with the theaters, uh, we, will, uh, we will be able to show films that the film distributor will not give us uh, virtually. So we are really uh, crossing <laughs> our fingers. Uh, and theaters are going to reopen in France as well on uh, at, uh, in mid-May. And that is important for us too, because if they don't reopen, then we won't be able to get the film. So <laughs> it's a very complicated um, programmation this year, but uh, I hope uh, you will join us to celebrate uh, our 20th year. Uh, it's June 1827. <laughs> so, uh, Merci encore, Sébastien, and um, everybody have a good Sunday, and we'll see you uh, on March 20, no, May 24th, I think, for the Zoom discussion with the director. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Thank, you. Thank, you for, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Thank and thanks to everybody, and um, have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you for staying with us. And, um, Au revoir. Merci. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>